Before we begin, I highly suggest that you watch my previous tutorial if you haven't done so already. It will help you get set up with modding, as well as introduce you to some modding basics that will be helpful to know for this video. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to make your own custom structure and forager. In order to make your own custom structure, you'll need to figure out some things. What do you want your structure to do? How much space will your structure take up? What materials will the player need to build your structure? What will it look like? So let's start with the first item on our list. What should our structure do? Well, I thought it might be cool to have a structure that heals the player when they stand near it. So let's go with that. How much space will our structure take up? All structures in Forger occupy space in a grid-like fashion. You may have noticed this while playing the game yourself. When you place a structure in the world, it kind of snaps in place. Our structure will adhere to this grid also. On this grid, a size of 1 means that a structure occupies a single grid cell. A size of 2 means that a structure takes up 4 grid cells in a 2x2 two two square. A size of 3 will occupy a 3x3 three three square, and so on. I think it would be cool to make our structure a statue that looks like the other decorative statues that are already in the game. The bee and fairy statues have a size of 1, so ours will too. What materials will the player need to build our structure? The beet and fairy statues both require 30 wood and one additional ingredient to make. I think our healing statue should take up 30 wood as well, and let's say 5 healing potions. Okay, the last thing on our list, what will our structure look like? This part is entirely personal preference, and it is up to the modder to create an image to use. Here's what I came up with for mine. I tried my best to make it look like the other structures already in the game. With all of this stuff in mind, let's get down to actually making our mod. I've already used the modding tool to create the mod files and loaded them up into GMEdit. The first thing I'll do is put the sprite I made into my mod folder. In GMEdit, if you click the menu icon and then click show in directory, it'll open your mod folder. Now I'll just drag in the image, then I'll click reload project in GMEdit so the image shows up on the left. In order to use this image in game, we'll need to add it as a sprite. We can do this with the sprite add function. The first thing we need to enter here is the name of the image file as a string. Then we need to enter the number of sub images the file contains. This is only useful if you have an image strip that you want to use as an animation. Our image isn't an animation, so we can just put one. Next, we can put false for the remove back option. Putting true here would instruct GameMaker to automatically make some colors in our sprite transparent based on whatever color was present in the bottom left of the image. We don't need or want this functionality, so false it is. The next value can also be false, since providing true here would instruct GameMaker to smooth out the edges, which we also don't want. The final two values are the origin of the sprite. This is how we tell GameMaker what point on the image to fix onto an object. I'm going to make the x origin 11, which is half the width of our image. This will horizontally center the sprite when we're placing it in the world. I'll make the Y origin 32, so that the sprite is vertically centered around what appears to be the base of the statue here. When you're making your own structure, it may take a bit of playing around with the origins to get things to look right. We'll want to store the result of this function in a variable so we can reference the sprite later. Next, we'll have to look up how to actually create a structure in Forager. Let's open the modding documentation, which I've included a link to in the description. Scrolling down on the left, we'll want to look under Structure Database and then General Functions. Structure Create is just the function that we're looking for. There are quite a lot of arguments for this function, so let's go through this one step at a time. The first argument is easy, since it says right here in the description that for creating modded structures, this should always be left undefined. So our first argument is undefined. The next argument is the name of our structure. I will put heart statue here. Next is a description of our structure. This description is what will show up when the player goes to build the structure, so you'll want to keep it fairly short. I'll put heals the player when nearby. Next up is the structure type. In order to provide the best explanation possible on what this argument is for, I reached out to my good friend and Forager developer, LazyEye, for an explanation. I'll let him do the talking. Hi, it's uh, me, Lazy Eye. I make, I, I program Forager. Uh, anyway, uh, don't use structure type. It's, it's, it's bad. Well, use structure type base. The point is, is that that, that the whole that whole uh, argument that enum it's, uh, it's a solution to like 
a really uh, stupid problem. Here's a secret. Uh, sometimes even the best programmers are really terrible programmers. So just uh, uh, just always use struct type base. Okay, bye. Back to you, Topher. And there you have it. This argument should always be structure type base. Next, we'll need to provide the sprite for this structure. We can put our sprite variable that we added earlier. Next up, we can leave this as undefined as per the documentation. The next argument will define what materials the player will need in order to build this structure. We've already decided that we want our structure to cost 30 wood and 5 healing potions. In order to describe this to Forager, we need to create an array. In our array, we need to alternate between items and quantities. So first, let's get the items we need from the documentation. Looks like the values we need are item.wood and item.healingpotion. So in our array, first we put an item in our recipe so we can start with wood. Then we put the quantity. We want the requirement of wood to be 30, so we put 30 next. Now we just repeat each item in our recipe. We only have one more, which is healing potion, and we want it to require five of those. Now that we have that filled out, we can move on to the next argument, which is the size. We've already determined this to be one, since we only want this structure to take up one grid cell. After size is the producer argument. If our structure produced items, like how a furnace does for example, we would put true here, but it doesn't so we can put false. Following this is where we'd put the items our structure produces, but it doesn't produce anything so we can put undefined. The next argument defines if the structure is unlocked by default. I'll put true here so the player can build it right away. Next, we have the build menu argument. This is how we tell Forager what build menu the structure should appear in. Since our structure has healing properties, I think it would make sense to put it in the magical category. A quick check in the enum section of the documentation will show us that build menu category dot magical is the right value to put here. The final argument is only necessary to provide if your structure produces gear. We can leave this undefined. That was a lot of work. Let's save what we have by pressing Ctrl S. We aren't quite finished yet, but let's jump into the game to see if our structure appears correctly. I'll load up the game, enable the mod, click compile for good measure, and load a new save. With cheats, of course. Let me give myself some wood. and some healing potions. And now let's check the magical build category. There's our statue, and now let's build it. Nice, I think it looks good, but it doesn't do anything yet. Let's go back and finish this mod. So, in order to give our structure some functionality, we need to detect whenever the structure is spawned into the world. If we check the events page of the docs, we'll find the event that we need, on structure spawn. There's another event that's similar, which is on structure build, but this only occurs when the structure is first built. On structure spawn will trigger whenever this structure is created, including when a player loads their save. Back in GM edit, let's add this event. So whenever any structure in the game is spawned, this event will run. So how do we check if the structure that was spawned is our heart statue? This is going to run for every structure in the game, so we need to make sure that we're operating only on our structure. That's where the structure argument of this event comes in handy. We can compare this value to the value that's returned by structure create to see if it's ours. So we'll need to store the result of structure create in a global variable so we can access it in our event. Then we can check if structure is equal to global heart statue structure. To test this out, let's just put a trace in here. So let's go back to the game, reload our save. Awesome, our message showed up so we know it's working. Alright, back to code. We want our structure to heal the player whenever they are standing near it. In order to do this, we'll need to have some code that runs over and over again so we can check if the player is standing near the structure or not. We can assign a step event to our structure, which will run every single frame of the game. First, let's define our own function. I'll name it heart statue step. 
Next, we'll need to assign this function to the structure as a step event. To do this, we'll need a special function called instance assign method. This can be found in the modding section of the documentation. For the first argument, we need to pass the object we want to assign the method to. We can pass inst here from our event, since this variable holds a reference to the object instance of our structure. Next, we put the type of event we want to assign to. So here we can put step. The next argument is the function we want to call for this event. So this is where we'll put the step event function we just made. Forager requires that we do something special with our function, though. We need to put it inside a special container using a function called script wrap. This is required to allow Forager to correctly access the function internally. The last argument here should just be true. This tells Forager that before running our function, it should run whatever was present in the event beforehand. It's important that we leave this as true, since structures have their own code that needs to run before ours in order to work properly. Okay. With that done, we now have a function that will run every single frame of the game inside of our structure. Before we continue coding, let's test everything out by putting another trace here. I like to test everything out with trace as I go, just to make sure I'm doing things right. Now let's check the game. Great. The console is flooded with our message, because it's running the trace function every single frame of the game. Let's move on now that we know everything is working so far. In our step event here, we want to check if the player is within a certain distance. We can do this easily with a built-in GameMaker function called pointDistance. This function is very simple and does just what we need. All we have to do is provide two coordinates, and it returns the distance in pixels of those two points. So first, we'll put x and y to indicate that the first point is the position of our structure. And for the last two points, we'll put objplayer.x and objplayer.y to get the coordinates of the player. objplayer is the name of the object that represents the player in Forager. Now we'll put this in an if statement. Now we can check if the distance is less than a certain number. How about 60? So if the player is standing within 60 pixels of the statue, this if statement will evaluate to true. So inside here, let's do objplayer.hp++. This way, we're adding one to the player's HP value every frame of the game that they're within 60 pixels of the statue. The only thing left to do is to test things out. Let's do one last compile and then load our save. In order to test this, we'll need to lower our health. I can do this easily by entering the following command. This will set our health to 1. Now I'll walk towards the statue and... Bam! Fully healed. This is a pretty powerful statue. That's all I'm going to go into for this tutorial, but you should continue to experiment with this mod. There are definitely ways that it can be improved. Maybe you could draw the healing radius so the player knows how close they have to be. Maybe the healing effect can be slowed down so it isn't as powerful. Use the documentation and experiment. If you'd like to see the answers to these questions yourself, I've finished this mod, cleaned it up, and uploaded it to the workshop. I've included a link to its workshop page in the description, so feel free to download it and check it out once you're done experimenting. Before I wrap up this video, I'd also like to quickly mention a free tool I've created to help on your modding journey. It's called the Forager Cosmetic Factory and it's an online tool that will allow you to create cosmetic mods without having to do any programming at all. I've included a link to this in the description as well, so feel free to check it out. If you're having trouble modding and you get really stuck, feel free to join the Forager Discord community to ask for help. There are tons of other people making their own mods, so it's a great place to share what you know and get feedback. I've included a link to this in the description as well. Good luck on your modding journey, and thanks for watching.